Thank you, Member. Recognize the Member for Oak Bay, Gordon Head. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I rise to take my place in second reading debates on Bill 48, Temporary Foreign Worker Protection Act, an act that's been introduced by the Minister, Honourable Speaker, to ensure protection for temporary uh, foreign workers. I rise to speak in support of this bill. Like the member from Chilliwack, we too raised a, a number of questions and concerns that I hope to see explored or be explored further in committee stage. But overall, I think this is good uh, legislation and taking us generally in the right direction. Um, temporary foreign workers, Honourable Speaker, play a critical role in our economy and our society, uh, whether they're working in the agriculture sector or home care aides, whether they're filling uh, seasonal employment, for example, Honourable Speaker. We uh, recently, many of us, attended the Union of BC Municipalities meeting in Whistler. Uh, the hotel I was staying at was clearly uh, uh, largely uh, employed by temporary foreign workers from New Zealand and Australia who clearly were coming to British Columbia to gain some experience and gain uh, some uh, expertise in skiing. Um, and I had a great deal of sympathy, uh, not sympathy, a great deal in com common with them because when I was their age, I was a temporary foreign worker in Australia where I was there for a year um, getting the better of the uh, surf and the sand and the Australian rules, Aussie rules football. It was a very, very rewarding experience for me uh, back in 1988, as I'm sure it was for those young people in Whistler today. Temporary foreign workers have many, play many critical roles in, in such um, trades as the, uh, uh, as the uh, uh, seasonal employment uh, and, uh, and, and for, for many actually, um, we find that it's a pathway for uh, eventual citizenship. And Canada as a, as a nation uh, built on the hard work of immigrants uh, it welcomes new Canadians on an ongoing basis. In fact, just this morning, Honourable Speaker, uh, a young boy in grade five at a school that was visiting this legislature from Glen Lyon in my riding just literally became a Canadian citizen, and this was a very big deal for him. He today was, uh, became Canadian. Um, Honourable Speaker, temporary foreign workers come to BC through multiple uh, programs, uh, including the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, the Seasonal Agricultural Worker Program, and the International Mobility Program. And as the member from Chilliwack pointed out, in 2017 alone, the federal government issued over 47,000 work permits for foreign nationals destined for BC, and 17,000 of these were on temporary foreign worker, were, were for temporary foreign workers. You know, we're, only, we're second only to Ontario in terms of the total number uh, of temporary uh, foreign worker work permits that have been issued. Uh, air, industry like agriculture, forestry, fishing, hunting, they account for nearly half of the temporary foreign workers in British Columbia, something like 9,000 workers. 83% uh, of those are te have uh, te temporary foreign worker permits. Uh, 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 sorry, 83% of those permits are located in the Lower Mainland, 5% in Thompson, Okanagan, and 4% on Vancouver Island. You know, Honourable Speaker, again, as somebody, uh, when, I was, um, uh, when I was at the University of Victoria, and my wife was also faculty there, and we had young children, we too took advantage of the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, and were able to bring to Canada uh, a, a Canadian, a now Canadian, but somebody who was working in Hong Kong as a nanny, and, and she was able to come to British Columbia on such a caregiver program and spend you know, three years with us before becoming a Canadian citizen. Now she's married here, she's contributing to the Canadian economy, her husband uh, is here as well, and, 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 and we benefited greatly as a family from being able to, to bring a temporary foreign worker here. I'm sure uh, other members in this, in this, in this uh, chamber have similar stories about the um, importance of temporary foreign workers. One of my son's friend, Honourable Speaker, he, was, he had very serious um, health issues and required 24-hour care, his father did rather, 24-hour care in the home. And again, that care was provided by live-in temporary uh, foreign workers, uh, 24 hours a day. Again, it was simply not possible to, to find the people who, Canadians, who would be able to or willing to, to serve in such a capacity. And, and again, in this case, we had uh, a loving home, temporary foreign workers come, spend a few years, are now Canadian and, and, and contributing to our economy and bringing their rich, diverse cultures to Victoria in this case, but British Columbia and Canada in general. 
You know, they are, however, Honorable Speaker, not everyone has the kind of employer that, that provides a, a nurturing, safe environment. Um, they, they, the temporary foreign workers can be amongst some of the most vulnerable in our society. Uh, in a new country, many, uh, many will face a language barrier, and they may be unfamiliar with their rights and our laws, and they are at risk for exploitation and abuse. And for this reason, uh, the legislation before us is important to support uh, because it addresses uh, uh, th this particular aspect. It begins to put in place a means and mechanism to actually ensure that temporary foreign workers are, are, are not exploited. You know, the legislation will, will improve protection, Honourable Speaker, for, for workers and the accountability of recruiters and employees. For example, it will do a couple of things. It will create two registries, one for foreign worker recruiters and one for foreign worker employers via cost-free, that's important, Honourable Speaker, cost-free online process. It'll allow also government to recover and, re and, and return to workers illegal fees charged by recruiters. And, and, and in particular, government can impose tougher penalties for non-compliance, including a loss of license or registration, financial penalties, $50,000 for an individual, $100,000 for a corporation. That's an awful lot of money, Honourable Speaker. Uh, this, and one year up to one year imprisonment. imprisonment. The, the legislation will improve government information about temporary foreign workers, and uh, recruiters and employers will also be required to disclose their relationships with recruiter organizations in various companies. You know, this is important, some of these changes. We know of, or we've heard stories of examples where recruiters collect a fee from temporary foreign workers. They end up, uh, which, uh, they end up working here. There's examples we've heard stories of where passports are held from temporary foreign workers and, and exploitation sets in. You know, much of this bill obviously is modeled after the Employer Standards Act, and, and Honorable Speaker, it follows the lead of other jurisdictions like Manitoba and Saskatchewan, which already have temporary foreign worker registries in place. Um, you know, last week, uh, one of our press gallery, Les Lane, uh, reported out that uh, BC is considered to be well behind the pack in upholding standards and pursuing con complaints. Uh, this was reported out in one of his uh, articles he wrote. And, and this is important to note that this, article, this legislation does actually deal with bringing us in line with some of the other jurisdictions. Honourable Speaker, in 2018, the BC budget for the Minister of Labour received a $3 million increase in funding over three years to support initiatives for compliance and enforcement, improve protections for vulnerable workers, and support fair and balanced treatment of workers and employers in BC. And, and within that context, we know that the legislation coming before us is legislation that has got monies associated with it to ensure that it's delivered in a manner that will actually um, meet the objective, object, objectives it's being put together to, to um, uh, address. Um, most recruiters and employers, Honourable Speaker, will seek to do their, their best uh, for employers. We know that, you know, but this legislation is targeting those who try to skirt the rules a little bit to ensure that um, there is uh, unsafe working and living conditions, for example, are dealt with to ensure that um, temporary foreign workers uh, cannot be treated uh, in, uh, inappropriately if be for fear of uh, being complaining about their jobs. They might lose their jobs, so, so, so you know, they might be sent home in debt. There's a whole bunch of issue, uh, issues that are being dealt with here that, um, it, it, uh, for, for which this um, bill is trying to ensure uh, safe conditions exist. Uh, this bill will require, Honourable Speaker, uh, recruiters and employers who seek out and, and hire temporary foreign workers um, registration that will require them to register. Uh, by doing so, the government will be able to identify and respond to bad operators for the benefit of all stakeholders involved. And in, in essence, this levels the playing field for both employers and recruiters by addressing the few bad operators out there who take advantage of temporary foreign workers and hence reap the benefit. So, Honourable Speaker, when this first came in, I, I feared that this bill um, uh, to establish a temporary foreign worker registry would have created an unfair burden for employers, the small employers, not so much the bigger employers, but the small employers, the employer who's a, a, perhaps a spouse who's looking for help for caregiver for their, for their you know, a, a ailing a partner, uh, I, I, you know, I, 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 a family who's looking for care, caregiver for their child, small business. I, I was initially concerned that this might be a regulatory red tape and oversight and cost. 
Um, I was reassured after uh, receiving a briefing from, from the uh, ministry uh, that this is indeed not the case, and in fact, um, we, the fact that it's free is not a, not a, uh, uh, a uh, financial burden, and the fact that it's looking like it'll be an online uh, process that'll take uh, uh, 15 minutes or so to fill out in terms of the registry, it seems to me that that's not onerous in light of the fact as an employer of a temporary foreign worker in a caregiver capacity, you already have to register for a GIC number, you have to register with CPP and EI deductions, etc. So this is relatively pale into comparison what already exists. Um, Overall, Honourable Speaker, I am pleased with this um, legislation, uh, again, creating a safer environment and, and a safer experience for, for temporary foreign workers will have a net positive impact on BC. I, I will also agree with the member from Chilliwack who spoke about some of the work that was done by the previous government in this area. I remember very fondly working with the then Minister of, I guess it was Jobs, um, uh, uh, now the member from Prince George, Valmont, who were together and collectively we were able to uh, introduce uh, legislative change to no longer make it allowable for an employer in British Columbia to require an employee to wear high heels or footwear otherwise deemed um, to be unsafe. In fact, uh, Honourable Speaker, I can tell you, um, if you go to bars around this, this area, you'll find that most people are no longer wearing high heels and very often people come up and are very pleased by that legislation. Government listened, government responded, and now you've got soft flats happening in, in bars across British Columbia, and that's actually an important health and safety uh, uh, achievement that we've got here. Finally, I'll say that I, I do commend the minister for looking out for workers, but I hope the minister can also recognize that we have to look out for not only temporary foreign workers, but our own workers here in British Columbia. The fact that British Columbia is dragging its, dragging its heels in terms of introducing legislation or introducing now order in council to actually address with the, the pre presumptive clause for mental illness in a number of professions. Frankly, we could follow the lead of some provinces and actually assume a presumptive clause for all mental illness in all work, for all workers under, covered under the Workmen's um, Compensation Board. The reason being, of course, is if you have exposure to uh, mental illness, having to recant and retell your stories time and time again in order to prove that it is your workforce that actually is the result of or caused that mental illness can be very onerous and frankly, frankly can be detrimental to the overall well-being and subsequent recovery of workers in BC. So I look forward to further efforts that the Minister of Labour will have in this regard in the, in the weeks and months ahead and uh, I thank him for this initial legislation to, the, uh, to protect temporary foreign workers and with that I'll take my place. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you.